Hello, YouTubers. Uh, I wanted to preface this video a little bit to uh, kind of let you know what happened to me in this video. Um, I started out this video thinking that I was just going to be replacing a, uh, a lock on my glove box. And as you'll see in this video, that turns into something else um, that I didn't really realize when I got into it. So as with a lot of projects that you think you understand what's going on and then you get into it and then you find out there's more and more so without any further ado let's watch the video well today's project just literally fell into my lap so we're going to take a look on how to install a glove box lock um this literally the the, the door came open and literally the uh this fell out with it so we're gonna go ahead and uh, see what it takes to put this back together um so let's get started all right well it literally just unscrewed this retaining nut that'll be on the other side of the door to here off of here into here so you might be able to see there's the hook that we're going to attach to and when this slides up it's going to catch that so that's what we got to make sure happens so i guess the alignment would be like that we'll put this guy through here and we'll try to get him to align on there now i did get lucky because the the locking mechanism that was inside of here just just basically pulled out pretty easily so um you know we'll try to go through here i didn't really have to understand how this went together but i think that when i push this in here it's going to lock in this keyhole and there's a whole process of removing this which is basically taking a little uh pin coming through that hole right there up at the top of this depressing that silver pin and that will allow you to um, pull the lock out assuming that the key's in there because when you stick the key in here maybe you can see um, oops you can watch the pins fall down as i go through so um there you go and that'll be how we stick that back in there but until we get to that part we're gonna have to get this set in and lined up so hopefully i can do that all right all right okay someplace else all right maybe like that all right so I'm just using this wrench to twist down that that nut because it looks like it would be a huge Allen wrench but I do not have one that size so all right now I have that on there my light in here just turned off for whatever reason. Well, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Right this second, it was working. All right, so this feels like it's it's not turning. So I'm going to guess that I got that tight enough. All right, and the key to this is that I need to get it to go in. And as you can see, maybe, I don't have my flashlight out right now. Um, that is going to engage with that. It looks like it's gonna go okay. And then theoretically it would lock if the lock's in there. Okay, so that goes in there. Now I'm gonna to try to stick the lock in there. Now remember, I did say that this hole had to line up. So I'm gonna put it with this, the holes now over here. So I'm gonna stick this 
with the um, silver key towards there or towards that lock. Put that up in there. All right, seems to want to go in there. And now I'm going to put it in and I turned it. Oops, it did not stay. see the problem I guess is that little silver key did not go inside all right let me get my light and let me get a little pin pusher and I'll be right back okay so up in here is that pin that I'm talking about right there and if I push it see if I can if I'm filming it good if I can push it I should be able to get this lock in so this is going to be a big challenge to film hold on push the pin and I push the lock in okay all right now the locking mechanism is out so it's acting like the door is locked so let's see if I can unlock it because I can't I can't connect it up because the locking mechanism is in the way be a bad thing right like this isn't the right key for that lock that would totally suck I am pretty sure on these locks you use the round key so guess what this round key does not work it does not press every pin like it was supposed to. So, if I can get in there and push that gray pin, leave the key in there, try to press that silver pin, silver gray pin in, and if I push that pin in, just does not release the lock to come out probably because the it's unlocked or it's in the lock position <sighs> I'm going to have to get this lock keyed for the keys that I have which apparently I do not have man all the things that you learn as you go through this. <clears throat> well, that sucks. Now I know why it was never put together. I've kind of got the lock halfway out. Let's see if I can get it to go the whole way. There it goes. All right, so now I gotta learn about how to key this, how to re-key this so that these pins actually work with this lock. So, obviously they must all have to be down for this thing to wanna turn, and it doesn't right now. So I'm gonna have to research how to do that. So let me go figure that out. Well, right on the uh, 1971 owner's manual, if you open it up here, you see 
that the square key unlocks the doors and the ignition and the round key does all other keys so that has to be for the glove box so I was using the right key but now I'm gonna just have to verify the pinouts on the lock so let's do it to make this work what basically has to happen is that all these pins here that you see have to be pushed down except for the silver pin which is a locking pin um, but the rest of the pins have to be pushed down at the same time otherwise the lock won't unseat and and let you turn it so with the key in hopefully you'll be able to see that um, some of the pins aren't laying flat so as the key moves in and out you'll see at least two of the keys right here are protruding out now you could take this to a locksmith or somebody that has the the keys for uh, the right inserts into this or you can go about uh, changing this yourself which basically means i'm going to file down grind off these uh these pieces here so that they're flush along with the other ones so that they all go down together now i might just use because on the back side of this these keys as soon as i probably start wanting to grind on them they're going to want to push down themselves so i'm going to try to keep them up maybe that's just maybe i'll just have to hold it with my fingers all right okay try to do it like that let me put some eye protection on and then we're going to try this and basically I just have a Dremel here with a rough sandpaper on it and I'm hoping that it's going to uh, be strong enough to, to do this to wear those down so let's try it All right, uh, I don't know if that's gonna work, but they look like they're all pretty flush down there. Let me blow this out and then uh, see if it works. All right, well, I gotta say, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, mm, I guess I could try to get these sides a little better. Uh, let me do that. All right, well, hopefully that, just touch that up a little bit. Hopefully that's laying flat enough, so. All right, now the only harm that does is really there's still keys that are up in the air and uh, they should be catching as they go in here. So if I load this in here, okay, that unlocks it. I think if I had to guess the problem is this isn't in there okay so if this is in there and we stuck the mechanism in Then we push down the keys. So now they'll need push down. Oh, I see the problem. So this has got to be back up. This has got to go in. That has to be pressed down, right? And it locks in there. Okay, then we turn it there. Pull out our key. Okay, now it stays locked. 
put the key in and then it'll unlock. Then that locks it. Okay. I guess the only good and bad news is, and I'm not sure I remember how this goes, but I don't think you were supposed to have to use a lock to unlock it, but let's look. Put the key back in. I can put it to the lock position, and I understand that should be locked. Nobody should be able to turn it. Put that in there, and then it allows me to unlock it. But if you don't do that, and you just put this, oh. Push it in there, it shuts it. Now, the only way to unlock this, apparently, is to use the key. Yeah. Well, I don't think that has anything to do with grinding off the pins. That just allowed me to use the lock as a lock. But for whatever reason now, um, I can put the lock into, uh, I think that this will be the, oh, I gotta put this back up, turn it, I can put it, it'll be sitting in the car like that, I believe, it'll be locked, of course you can't turn it. Oops, keep forgetting the key's got to be down. Goes in that way. Then it allows you to take it and unlock it. And then when you close it again, there it goes. It'll go up. And then you can't unlock it again without the key. Well, I guess it's really locked all the time. Let's. There it goes. Let's see how this works in the car. Um, but uh, at least I got the key working now, which is further than I had before. So you saw the little trick to, to wear down those tumblers. And um, without that, I couldn't use this lock at all. I couldn't turn anything. So that definitely was a fix for that problem. Now let's see if we can just fine tune the way that this works. All right, let's take it over to the car. All right, so what we gotta do now is um, install this again. Um, the latch is right there, so I stick it back in there. Push this back up there. Got this started, use this to tighten her up. Okay. Alright. Guess that's tight. Looks like it lines up. So the window where you got to get these pins back in there is right here underneath the, the lock piece. So when I install it, I have to install it this way. Put it behind there. All right, I got to choke that up. Okay, I did that. Now the piece is in there. Um, let's unlock it. All right, so it's unlocked. Okay, now. Okay, figure out which way this goes. Okay, so if it's in there, I just don't hear it clicking. Seems to me. 
so if it's I'm just looking to see if there's an adjustment here. I think what it's showing me is that this little bar here could potentially come back further. Okay. I think I just moved it towards me. All right. There. Now it's grabbing it. I had to pull the catch for it closer towards me so that it could sink down into the thing there. All right, that opened up. I will say... I guess that's tight, I don't know. does not work as nice as a new car I can tell you that but it is catching which is more than it was doing before it was just flying open all the time so the good thing is you can't pull the thing out this is locked the only way just gotta remember to stick the key which, okay the key goes up is you got to swivel it like that and the only thing I'm noticing is oh you can if you leave the key in there and turn it, you get it locked like that. If you don't, it looks like it locks a different way. Okay, so there's the difference, I guess. With the key, you can go all the way around, so that's not locked, but it won't open and won't open without a key. All right. Well, let me tell you. It's an improvement over what it was. It may not be perfect, but I'm gonna live with that. I just don't need this door flying open. It's not flying open now, and uh, I'm happy with that. The only way to open a door is with the key. And uh, so, all right, I'm gonna consider that a fix because like before I started with this thing, not keyed to this key, I figured out a way to, um, uh, grind down the key so that it would allow it to work and uh, so that even though this key is not a match for that lock it still works now so and you can't unlock it without a key now how many keys might work I don't know but at least you have to have something so um, yep yeah, so there you go well I hope you found that video informative um, I tried my best with what I have what I think there just looking at the condition of that lock and everything, it looks like it might have been a lock that somebody had bought and, you know, knew someplace. Just included it in the car. It was never keyed to the car. And, but, you know, they just left it in there, but not really uh, attached to the door. So the door was flying open and I just never put enough uh, resources into looking at exactly why. Now I did now i've seen how it should be attached to the door correctly and then uh keyed the lock so at least it locks and unlocks with the key which is better than it ever was before so i'm going to consider that a win and also i have a um a door lock the passenger side door lock with the same problem the key does not work in that side it only works on the driver's side so i think i'm going to use that little technique to fix that so that the key works over there too it's not a huge problem but if i can get all the keys keyholes working with the keys that came with the car that will be great so if you like the video you know please give it a thumb up thumbs up if you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it please um, uh, consider subscribing uh, and any comments you know like I'm not a professional locksmith I just find hacks to 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 get the things to work the need I do that for what I need to do on some projects um, of course you always like to do things the right way but then you got to look at the cost benefit analysis of actually how much money would it charge me at a locksmith to get that 
working 100% the way it was and it just didn't seem like that was the best approach for me. So I took a little shortcut. All you need is a Dremel and uh, you're in business. So until next time, ciao guys.